Um, all right, yes, fuck it. This is the video that I'm making. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure just like how most of you are doing right now, I did take a step back to take a look in the mirror and also question my sanity. I mean, what am I even talking about right now? What's going on here? How did we get to this point? And while obviously all of those questions have answers, terrible answers, and while that doesn't mean that the two movies of discussion in this video have anything to do with those terrible answers, I mean, I don't know, I haven't even seen the films yet. Barbie is starting to worry me though, I'm not gonna lie. Doesn't matter. Today, we're talking Barbieheimer. In my opinion, something that has become one of the biggest theatrical events since Endgame. To put that into a slight perspective, because while yes, everyone and their mothers know about the conclusion to one of the greatest cinematic achievements of all time with the MCU's Infinity Saga, man, it's crazy to think that this big purple ball sack would become a household name. Crazy. But to be honest, what's crazier is the fact that it's now been closer to four years since that cinematic achievement, and nothing really since then. Not a sole theatrical or cultural phenomenon that has taken the world by storm and ran with it all the way to the end of the rainbow. The only green rainbow. And when you take a deeper dive into Hollywood and Hollywood culture as a whole, it's not really hard to see why. For some obvious and some not so obvious reasons, the gap between audience retention and relatability to Hollywood and studio executives has been dividing apart for quite some time now but at a far more dramatic pace than even some of the most conscientious of people might not realize. Post Endgame, it's easy to say that Disney as a whole was at its very peak. And while that doesn't necessarily speak for some of the other more, uh, troubled studios like Warner Brothers or even Lucasfilm within their own division, let's still take a trip down memory lane, shall we? Post Endgame, we the paying customer, the audience, the fans, have been blessed with nine MCU movies, two of which were, yes, competently made, but still struggled to reach the heights and the gold standard that the MCU had become with Marvel Phase 3. Not to mention seven DCEU movies, all of which, and it's crazy because I truly mean all of them, ranged from absolute total dog shit to what, rebooted mid? I mean, the best DCEU project wasn't even released theatrically, and three out of their last four films have become some of the biggest box office flops of all time. Not to mention during this time, us the audience have also been blessed to receive the conclusion of two trilogies with the dinosaur movies in Jurassic World Dominion and Michael B. Jordan at the top of his game in Creed 3. Successful video game adaptations with Sonic, Mortal Kombat, and Super Mario, We've returned to Pandora to catch up with Sully Smurf and fam so James Cameron could show off his new toys. Harrison Ford's indie forcefully made an appearance on the big screen. Granted, he's 80, and no one wanted this to happen, including himself, but it did happen. And that's just IPs, but I'm pretty sure you're starting to get what I'm saying. Somewhere along the way, through the noticeable decline in quality and shift to quantity, through the lack of studio transparency and obvious lack of planning, through the not-so-subtle identity politics, through the assassination and character deconstruction of some of the best characters we've ever seen, through the blatant fan-baiting and in turn fan-attacking, all led and amounted to what, in my opinion, especially in certain cases, to the almost irreversible fan apathy that has seemingly been commonplace throughout most of our once-beloved IPs and has created this type of vortex that no film, no matter the IP, can break through. Leading us to the point of our video today, Barbieheimer. Two films that I'm sure did not decide on purpose to release on the same weekend, but two films that are surely benefiting from that non-decision. Two movies that couldn't find themselves more different in tone, story, and audience demographics if they tried, but yet, here we are. And so is the audience. With at the time of this recording, almost 80,000 people have bought in tickets to watch the two films on the same day. And that's just from AMC, with Regal and Multiplex's numbers yet to be released. Creating the cultural phenomenon that has been all over social media coined Barbieheimer. 
throwing back mimosas with hopefully the Barbie of your life, to kicking it with some scotch and Jaeger bombs with the boys as you prepare to watch Christopher Nolan provide you with cinema. A truly W day. And while movies like Top Gun Maverick and Spider-Man fan service were championed as saviors of the box office at the time, which isn't completely untrue, those two films weren't creating the same type of buzz, the same type of atmosphere that I feel as if I'm living in currently. And while there will always be excitement surrounding cameos or spoilers for a Marvel movie, that's not buzz, that's not excitement, that's just clamoring. A desperate fan base grasping at straws and clawing for anything that has a semblance of what they once had, but lost. And while the title might suggest it, I'm not saying that Barbie or Oppenheimer will be the quote-unquote savior of cinema or that this cultural event is nearly as big is what it was with the release of Endgame. No. No, 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 no. Far from it. The point is, it is here. And not only are the films receiving the benefits of this fan excitement, but we, the fans, are taking a dub as well. There are still films out there that can touch our hearts, give us the magic that movie escapism is supposed to make you feel. And it's fun to be a part of something theatrically that you can almost guarantee that other people are going to be a part of. Much like how I said in my last video recapping Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning and the powerful impact that I believe the Tom Cruise effect had on the film, to me, what cinema is and what cinema represents itself is an experience. And the cultural phenomenon that is known as Barbieheimer has somehow, some way, found itself in that category. And in my eyes, that's a job well done. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Same thing, still comment down below. Engaging with you guys is truly one of the best aspects of doing this, and it's always super interesting, and I appreciate hearing all of your perspectives. I'm obviously also going to be taking a part of Barbie Heimer, so expect videos on those in the next couple days. I don't really know which one is going to come first, they're going to be different videos, not together, so I guess we'll see. You'll just have to subscribe. But like I said, I am starting to get a little worried about Barbie. People are coming out with reviews, and I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be very scary. But I still hope it's good. I'm going in with good expectations. So I hope I see you guys here when those videos come out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.